Can you explain one more time how the conflict the between Obama's goals of de-weaponizing, budget passing, and debt ceiling raising and cutting Social Security in a way that the left thinks he was forced to do it can be resolved? Uh, let me put it this way. Right now, there are sort of competing... Uh, I read something today that said that the Senate may be talking about a longer window. They want a longer... Uh, continuing resolution and uh, debt ceiling hike. They want to do it for three months, six months, whatever it is. Uh, President Obama has suggested that he would accept the six week. And once that is done without any preconditions, he would negotiate. The more there is a condensed timeline and the further out it is from the 2014 elections, further away, the more there is an opportunity to create a crisis point where, look, we've got to get past this. There's more opportunity for the president to get out of it. Some type of process victory, i.e., not only are we going to raise the debt ceiling in six weeks, but we're also going to go to a McConnell rule, which says that the president can raise the debt ceiling and it can be reversed by two-thirds uh, of, of the Senate. In that scenario... The president still needs to demand something in return for the entitlement reform that supposedly the Republicans want, but also he wants. He wants to have a deal like welfare reform, which you'll remember was done with a Republican Congress. And so he wants to come to some type of welfare reform agreement. The calculation is they cannot get it without some type of increase in revenues. And that's why he's already put on the table, I will accept loopholes closing. He can't get it without that because there's no way that any Democrat could sign on without that. They shouldn't sign on even with it, frankly. So what he's going to bring, what he wants to come out of this negotiation with is entitlement reform and de-weaponizing the debt ceiling for future uh, generations. That's where they want to get to. They do not have a clear plan of how to get there. They couldn't because nobody knows. There's so many moving pictures. Uh, I mean, so many moving parts. But the point is, is that's where you want to get to. So, you know, it's like, think about it as I'm on Island A. I want to get to Island B. And you're sailing across whatever it is, this small sea, and storms come or winds come and change their direction. And you tack your boat based upon those things so that you're always trying to get to that other shore. And that's what we're seeing now is taking place. Did that explain it? I don't know if that did it. Sam, can you speculate how he gets there? Do you have any ideas how he gets there? I've just said it. But he I mean, creates a, he does a short term window. He says, we've got six weeks to negotiate this. And he sits down and they figure out something that is sort of like uh, palatable to the Republicans. Now, the, like like cutting Social Security, cutting Ish. Medicare, just because he wants it. Yeah. Doesn't mean that the Republicans don't want it, too. Right. And then it's a question of if the Republicans walk out of there saying, like, this is what President Obama wanted. We wanted some other, and they'll they'll get some other type of tax cut. Do you see though the the, the two pitfalls? I don't I, I don't know that it's going to work because I'm not quite convinced. You know the dynamics now are different than they were two years ago exactly. because President Obama's not yeah. running for re-election. He's gone. So what is my incentive if I'm a Democratic Congressperson to vote against the most popular, successful government program Absolutely. ever? Absolutely. Right. And then jeopardize. And then Republicans well, also your aren't they endlessly right. You have no incentive for it. In fact, you have a disincentive, but you also don't want to be seen as the guy who's holding up the deal and be responsible for us going through the debt ceiling. So the the leverage here for that is that no one wants to be held responsible for holding up a deal. That's how you jam somebody. That's how you jam somebody. And this is why the leadership uh, in the Senate in particular, but also in the House, for the Democrats is so important because Harry Reid can just say, we're not going to bring it up for a vote, period. End of story. That's it. I'm the one who's responsible for that. And then, you know, 
senators can ham and haw, they can lay low, they can not talk about it. That's the strategy that's been taking place right now with this piecemeal stuff. And, and it's been working. It's been working really well. And then I think the other possibility is, is just these people are so crazy in the same way that they rejected a deal a couple of years ago that would have gone through that was like 70% of what they wanted. They rejected it because it wasn't One 100%. Hope. One can hope. That's also possible. And that's why, on some level, look, the deal's not going to be made until the 11th hour, regardless of when that 11th hour is. If it's a six-week extension, it's going to be made in the sixth week. If it's a six-month extension, it's going to be made in the, sixth, in the fourth week of the sixth month. The longer you draw this out, um, the more pain it's inflicting on the Republicans from a political standpoint. Frankly, and the more it's important to do with that woman who called yesterday was, I think it was uh, Heather from L.A., which is like, call your Democratic rep and sign petitions and get and out the ahead more of time that. There is for uh, progressive forces to get out ahead of any deal that would. Uh, that's why if you want, I mean, look, it's the shock doctrine, right? If you want, if you go in and you think that you have an agenda that you want to push through that is screwing the most amount of constituencies, <laughs> the best time to do that is in a time of crisis when, there is, when it's a crisis. And, you know, the shorter the window, the greater the crisis uh, that the negotiations will take place under. So that's, that's, the, that's the agenda.